what's up guys i am back again and really quick just want to take a second to say thank you to everyone who reached out and offered condolences um, over my mom and what went on last week i'm good though i am ready to get back to work so i thought today i would get things started with something pretty fun So this is what we're doing today. This is the 2005 Grand Prix base model that I have. I'm sure a lot of you know about. This is the driver's information center. Now, some of you may or may not know that the driver's information centers on this body Grand Prix come in a couple flavors. The three, the one with three buttons here, which is the simpler version, which everyone calls the three button DIC for obvious reasons, came on base models and the lower end cars. And if you look at its functionality, let me shut the door so it'll shut up. If you look at its functionality, you don't have a lot of different stuff. You've got your, basically your mileage here and you've got a couple trip that you can do with this button. You've got, this is the reset button right here in the middle, which as you can see, the paint's already rubbed off on. Then under information, you can basically make some changes to the car, what language you want the information in, whether you want it in metric or standard, etc. Then there's just some things you can reset and some things that you can change there. So nothing super interesting really in these older, simpler versions. However, the higher end cars and some of the later base models even came with one of these that has five buttons across here. And I bet you can't guess what that one's called. That's right, a walrus. Just kidding, it's a five button DIC. Anyway, so today we're gonna be swapping this three button DIC for the five button DIC, which is our super easy job. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. But first, let me show you what you need. First of all, you are going to need a five button DIC out of a Grand Prix that has one. These come in most all comp G's and GXP's, but I have found, and I actually found in this particular instance, this five button DIC was actually in an 08 base model. In addition to the one larger piece, you will need two other things, a GM temperature sensor for your exterior temperature, that probably doesn't come with your car. So let me show you where these things are and how to grab them because junkyards are definitely your best best. So the first piece you're going to find moving front to back behind this headlight, we're just gonna unbolt this, pull this lever up, and then this whole headlight assembly will wiggle out and out of the way like so. There's one electrical connector right here, which is the only connection to the headlights, so that's a really easy thing to swap. And with that out of the way, you're going to look down here for an empty connector right here. And below that, right in here, there's a hole where a temperature sensor should go. So to add this, you're just gonna take the new one or the one from the junkyard, if you feel right in here, let me see if I can get this close enough. You can feel right in here for this hole in the cowl. This isn't going to be fun. And you may actually even want to plug this in first. That way, if you accidentally drop it, it won't go anywhere. Once you've got it plugged in, just find the little hole that it sits in which will face kind of halfway down. And then you should be able to wiggle that in and kind of half turn it. And then there you go. It just sits right in there. And you put the headlight back and you're finished with the temp sensor install. Next, you're gonna to need to get into the trunk and look up this way and we're gonna need a light. Okay, then from the inside of your trunk, looking up here, you'll see an empty place here where something should be. That's where your compass sensor goes. And there's a couple of different ways to reach it, but if you don't have the monsoon audio, the easiest way 
is through this hole where the amp would be because you can reach straight forward should be able to feel around and see what you need there so then all you're going to need to do is snap the one from this in here it just clips in like this does and then the wiring is up there too you'll just have to feel for that and reconnect it i just don't have that part with me right now because i haven't grabbed it yet but that will take care of the compass end of getting the thing to work okay and for the final install is actually changing the dic itself this is surprisingly easy to do all you're going to do is take your keys out a flathead screwdriver to get behind this surround for the key pop it forward be very careful with it because it is plastic the rest of this just snaps in the trick is you have to be really careful not to break it because it's very easy to break what i would suggest doing is start down here and just pull it loose all the way around as you go until you get to the other corner once it's loose rotate it like this to get it around the shifter and angle it up then there's just a one connector right here that you unplug and you're done then all you need to do to put it back in is the reverse now on this there is going to be a passenger's a passenger's airbag module connector that we're not going to use because this car doesn't have those uh, but other than that it should plug in just like normal right here then you're just going to rotate it back into position and carefully making sure that you've got it lined up correctly just do the reverse of what you had to do to get it out just press it in a little bit at a time until it's completely flush like so take your surround Make sure it's facing the correct way, obviously. Push that back in, and that's it. As you can see, it already works. Now, let's explore a few of these options. That's how it powers on. Everything looks fine there. It is showing certain things ajar. We already know that. This car has problems. None of this is new. Now, you'll see here that this screen comes up differently. And one thing that I am gonna do because I don't like the way it is, is I'm gonna take daytime enhancement off just because I don't like the way that one looks. Okay, so then you've got basically all your other stuff. This is for calibrating the compass. Personal programming mode is the same. Now, this does have this tire pressure monitor system where each wheel is separate. And that's something that 07 and 08 cars had that the older cars do not have. So because of that, a lot of times I would suggest, you know, you would want to use an 04 or 05 module, not an 07 or 08. But this is what I found. This is what I had available. So it's what we're going to use. And then I may swap it to the other one later, but just be aware if you do this, you're going to have codes for the, oh, look, there's that. Let's, let's uh, get out of that. Anyway, um, you're gonna have codes for tire pressure monitor system since you don't have the correct system. Now, new buttons, fuel, gonna give you range. Oh my God. All right, so you're gonna have your, you're gonna have your average economy, instant economy, and then your range. None of these were available on the three button. Now you will also, and forgive this traction control thing, that's a car, the problem this car has, but that's gonna be for another video. Anyway, you've got your same stuff here, but you've also got average speed, which you did not have on the other one. You've got time elapsed, which you didn't have on the other one. So several new things there. Then if you go over here to where you see a picture of a gauge, You've got engine hours, you've got your remaining oil life that's visible, you've got transmission fluid temperature, battery voltage. I mean, none of that obviously was, was available in the other one either. So it's pretty cool. I mean, you get a lot of, 
a lot of new features in an item that doesn't really take but five minutes to change out. The other difference, this is most of these newer ones are gonna have this trim around them, which obviously doesn't match the rest of my dash. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. I'll either remove this or maybe I'll get the ones for the other one. It just depends on which one I like better. But that's it. So that's basically it. Um, it's like I said, it's a super easy swap. It's one of the easiest upgrades you can probably do. Uh, the one thing I would suggest doing is, like I said, if you get a module from the same year as your car, you will not have the issue with the tire monitor system. And I may swap to that later anyway, but um, for right now, this was enough. But the procedure is exactly the same for every version, whether it's an 04, 05, 06, 07, whatever. You're just gonna have basically those three items to swap out and then you can uh, go from a three button to a five button. So, any other questions, let me know down in the comments. If this video helps you, make sure that you hit the like button down below because that helps my channel. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and that you've hit the notification icon so that you'll be aware when I upload. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and peace.